I was going through optimizing the dimensions package when I noticed something a bit weird. Uh, a lot of the functions that are in uh, generics.mathematics.dimensions specifically are very straightforward functions. Uh, things that are there to basically hide the fact, hide hide some of the underlying uh, stuff, but there's not really a whole lot going on in, in them. Uh, operators, which if you look at the assembly, fundamentally just do what a basic operator does anyways, and tons of things that should be inlined. So I went through and added a bunch of uh, inline always aspects just to force that these should be inlined unless it, for some reason inlining it would change the underlying semantics. So, in, and in that case it would give an error. Uh, but this, this essentially says that inlining is not preferred but should be done. Uh, something weird happens. Let's let's go through and make sure that these are built and installed. Okay, so like I said, inlining always is not always allowed. So let's change that. Just an inline. I'm trying to be a bit hyperbolic at first and then just weaning down so that it can show uh, she could show something but uh, these are these are fine too inline always so let's change these as are these Ah, right, I believe these, uh, the, the unit constructors would be considered uh, dispatching. Um, so let's just make sure that this builds at this point. It should. And it does. And then just let it finish building, and then I'll go and install it. I'm going to go into tests and just make sure that these are... Well, I just installed new stuff, so it's got to be... They've all got to be rebuilt. I'm only showing the dimension stuff, so let's... Let's only build those. I normally don't do specific builds. I normally rebuild the whole thing, but... We really don't need to do that just to demonstrate what I, what I noticed. Okay. Now it's not the test that I'm interested in, but actually the profile information. Now I don't have a whole lot written here, but uh, those those seem really high, like really, really high. Let's and then just to just to compare. What? What the fuck? Something is. Something is definitely wrong here. Is this... Is this that my approach is horribly inefficient now? I, I highly doubt it, because I've, I've done this before and noticed almost no performance overhead. Uh, something wrong with my, my slightly revised approach? I, I, I doubt that, but... This is, this is odd. Also, these numbers are higher than I was noticing before. Uh, even with this. Let's change. And line always. Oh my god. There we go. To just inline.
Look at that already. That's that's pretty hefty uh, memory decrease. And, uh, you know, obviously storage decrease as well, but these libraries get loaded into memory in their entirety. And just rebuild the dimension stuff again. numbers nearly halved. Just just by not inlining them, something that nearly everybody will tell you, improves the performance. Actually halved the execution time. Removing something that people tell you improves performance actually sped up performance. Let's, let's see if we can push this further. Well, I broke the compiler. That's... Not the first time I've done that. Okay, mm. let's just remove all of them, and then... Um, <clears throat> rebuild this because then we're telling it not that inlining shouldn't even be preferred and the compiler will only inline in cases where it can prove that there's no performance degradation which probably going to be pretty rare Or maybe no change at all. Inlining preferred will still get ignored if it will cause an increase in uh, in execution time. Inline always forces it. That's the always name. But I really only need to be, rebuild the profile, so let's just build that one specifically. Okay, so that's the same. Then Yeah, I'm not inlining anything here. So <clears throat> obviously something about my changes did increase the execution time a quite a bit more than expected, almost ten times more. I do need to deal with that. Um, before it was only it was only about a fifteen percent increase, so some things are going on that should not be. I'll look at the assembly to figure that out. But I, I you know, I figured one of the first things to do was start to inline the really simple stuff, and as you can see, that actually hurt the performance immensely. Uh, so then the question most people should be asking is why would inlining uh, generally regarded as totally viable optimization technique decrease performance that much and that's sort of an advanced topic but there is something I would like to show you guys this is likely going to get some unnecessary flack. I'm not trying to say object orientation is bad. There's just a few things here that you want to read uh, because it's going to cover the point 
Uh, now these regard specifically with uh, uh, um, specifically with object oriented programming, but the the issue that is causing the inlining to actually be slower is present here and is something that people need to be aware of with modern with modern computers because a lot of the performance stuff for old computers does not translate well to new computers. Uh, so CatV has a few things mentioned here. Some of them are just bash object-oriented uh, programming specifically. Uh, a few of them do discuss what we're interested in uh, and are one of the best sources to that, that, that actually discuss what we're interested in. Um, I would recommend reading all of these, even if just for nothing else, to gain some perspective. Um, you, you see, go through my code, you can see that I do use objects. I'm not purely against object-oriented programming, uh, but it, it has its it has its place, and some people get uh, a bit fanatical over it. The one we're going to be covering is uh, that I really want you to to uh, read, and that I'll show off a little bit. Is Pitfalls of Object-Oriented Programming by Tolboy Albrecht of uh, Sony Computer Entertainment Europe, and I've already loaded that up. It's a uh, it was meant to be given as a presentation, but like most crappy presentations, there's considerably too much text, and so this is readable in its own right. Uh, again, I would I would strongly recommend actually going through and reading this, and I will have. Um, I will have uh, links to these, uh, both the Cat V page on. Um, let me get the Cat V page on software, and then also this this presentation specifically. I, I'll have the Cat V link rather than the Sony link, just because the Cat V link uh, Cat V guys are really good at um, archiving. So this link hasn't changed in, geez, like a decade. Um, this is really where it starts to get interesting. There used to be a time where memory was faster than the processor, but it's totally reversed now, and this keeps, like, processor speeds are growing considerably faster than memory speeds, and it's causing this little problem. Now, this is back in 2009, so it's considerably worse of a difference now, um, but the RAM latency is is something people need to keep in mind. Anytime you increase the memory, uh, the size of the memory uh, that something uses up, it's a huge amount of effort to actually, uh, for the processor to actually read that memory as opposed to just calculating something. And they have some great examples in here that I don't know where they are, but have nothing to do with object oriented programming specifically, but even just like. Uh, Checking a condition where uh, whether or not something exists and then uh, calculating it. Because of things like branch miss predictions, it's actually better to just calculate it and then not wind up needing it. Or, um, and then of course, they cover the uh, how reducing memory use and actually calculating things instead of uh, having them in memory or things like preloading and whatnot. Uh, considerably improved performance and it's a great it's an absolutely great read on optimization and tons of this apply to even non PlayStation 3 stuff uh, for whatever reason he's actually largely talking about just computers in general and not the PS3 uh, but the inlining issue you saw how much of a difference that had in the the size of the overall uh, library that specific package the the, the library um, the shared object that is um, did decrease by that specific amount the 0.15 megabytes that's what had the effect it's just that massive increase in RAM that was used had that effect. So 
point here is just be careful about inlining. Don't blindly inline thinking that things are going to be faster. Uh, even I'm guilty of that, but there are uh, there are so many ways to measure the execution time of code that you should be doing it and compare uh, specific functions whether it's uh, whether it's actually advantageous to inline them or to not inline them because that um, that'll uh, it'll surprise you we'll just leave it at that it'll it'll surprise you there are some things that should be really obvious that they should be inlined and as it turns out no they should not be inlined at all or some things that you would think should never be inlined actually do gain performance benefits from inlining them so just just be aware of that it's a very complicated issue that has a lot to do with individual things with the processor that people tend to not even pay attention to. So, um, yeah, always, always test, always profile your code, because that's the only way to actually know this stuff. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Uh, Hopefully you find my videos in general uh, helpful or at least entertaining. Uh, consider subscribing. You get notifications when I make new videos, which happens to be quite often. And uh, it, you actually wind up helping me out by giving subscri uh, by subscribing. Have a good one.